we just looked at four relations on the natural numbers and decided which ones were reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Now, I want to now think about these two relations, R1 and R2, which are on this finite set A. A has three elements. And just as a comment, and this connects to what we did in, in part one of this lesson, we see A has three elements. So altogether, there are um, two to the three squared, which is two to the nine relations on A. This is a really large number, and I certainly am not going to list all of the relations on A, but we will work with these two specific ones. And let's figure out if they are reflexive, symmetric, transitive. Now, R1, immediately, we see this is not reflexive because reflexivity is a for all. And you see the element three is in A, but 3, 3 is not in R1, and so this is not reflexive. Now, symmetric. This we can see a little bit easier, I think, when we have all of the elements of the relation listed like this. But you flip, okay, okay. <laughs> we flip this one and it's in the relation. Take this, flip it, it's in the relation. So this is wonderful. R1 is symmetric. And then the last property was transitive. This would say you have um, a pair in the relation and another one in the middle ones match. Okay, so we have one, two, two, one. We would need one, one, but we have it, right? Or we could go two, one, one, two. We would need two, two, and we have it. Um, we could also do two, one, or excuse me, two, 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 one. The middle ones match, we would need two, one. Oh, well, that's just this one, okay? So you can run through all different possibilities of having middle ones match, and you will see, in fact, R1 is transitive. Okay? Now let's look at R2. It's on the same set A. Well, this one is reflexive. We can see this because we have ordered pairs 1, 1, 3, 3, and 2, 2. But R2 is not uh, symmetric. And why is this? Well, look, 1, 3 is in R2, but 3, 1 is not in R2. So this one is reflexive. It is not symmetric. Now let's think about transitive. We can try to check ordered pairs where the middle ones match. So for instance, one, three, 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 middle ones match. We have one, three. Um, okay, we could have one, one, and one, three, and the middle ones would be this one and this one, and we would need one, three, but we have this two. And then the other ones, these diagonal elements like we saw in an example in the first part of this lesson, that video, um, these, the only thing you could have the middle ones match and is if you had three, three, and three, three, and then it's no problem. One, one, and one, one, and it's no problem. Okay, so this is transitive. There wasn't that much to check here. So R2 is transitive, okay? Another thing I want to show you when you have a finite set A is you can depict a relation with a diagram. So let me draw. Maybe I will depict R2 since I have space down here. What you can do is you can list the elements of A. It's one, two, and three. And then just draw arrows because there's an order here right? You draw an arrow from the first to the second. If one relates to three, you draw an arrow between one and three. And we do have that. One relates to three. And here we have three relates to three. We have two relates to two. And we have one relates to one. Okay? This is this relation. There are four elements. There are four arrows. 
Now, you can translate the properties of symmetric, transitive, reflexive in terms of, of a picture like this. For instance, here, the reflexivity. You see, you have sort of a loop on each element of A. And maybe now, let's also draw the diagram for R1. R1 has one relates to one, two relates to two, one relates to two, and we have two relates to one, okay? So you see the symmetric aspect coming here. This one was not symmetric. Symmetric is if every time you have an arrow in one direction, you have an arrow in the other direction. And we see it fails here because we do not have an arrow in this other direction. Because this three does not have a loop, not reflexive, right? We can see it in this diagram. What I have done is redrawn the diagrams for R1 and R2. These were both relations on the set one, two, three. And in fact, these diagrams precisely tell you the elements of the relation. But I wanna talk now about how to see transitivity from the diagram. And both of these were transitive, but there's something about the diagram that we can't quite see the full picture, just only looking at these two. So let's remind ourselves what transitive means. This says for all A, B, C, and A, well, if A relates to B and B relates to C, we must have A relates to C, right? Now, this part, this was my middle one's match, but let's think about this in terms of diagrams. Well, one of them we see here because we have one relates to two, two relates to one, we must have this loop. Or similarly, um, two relates to one, we relates to two, we must have this loop, okay? So this picture here is part of it, but there's something else. Let's imagine A, B, and C are all different elements of A. Here, that wasn't the case. So then, it would look something like this. I would have A, B, and C. The assumption is A relates to B and B relates to C. Okay, so we have this in our diagram. But then to be reflexive, we must have this, A relates to C. And that is right here. So this is what you're looking for. If you have two sides of a triangle, one, two sides of a triangle, then you must have the third side. And this would be transitivity. And you can kind of think about it as two sides of a triangle and the third side, I guess. Or you can just think about these two different types of pictures that you must have. You must have this loop, this loop at the end of a picture like this, and then you must have, this would be in the case where A, B, C are distinct. A relates to B, B relates to C, we must have A relates to C. Two sides of a triangle, then we must have the third. Now, in R2, R2 is transitive, but there's not a new sort of picture I'm thinking about adding to. In R2, we do not have something like this. In R2, we do not have two sides of a triangle. We did kind of think and realize R2 was transitive, but it was something like this. One relates to one, one relates to three, we have one relates to three. And that was not really something to even worry about. The times where you really have a problem is if you had one of these and you do not have the loop, fails transitivity. Or if you have two sides of a triangle and you do not have the third side, fails transitivity. So these really are the two pictures to look for in your diagram to look for transitivity of the relation. There's one more thing I want to define today and we will prove something about this and that is the inverse relation. This will really come up for us when we get into functions but it's, today is a very natural time to bring it up. The inverse relation Okay, what is this? Well, given a relation R from A to B, 
our inverse, the inverse relation, this is a relation from B to A. And as a set, this is all B comma A such that AB is in R. So you take every element in R, it's an ordered pair, and you just interchange the two coordinates. And now you have a relation from B to A, and this is the inverse relation. As a quick example, back to these two relations. If we want R2 inverse, well, this is not all that interesting when we interchange the coordinates for the first three because we just get the same elements back again but this one we get 3 1 okay and for our one inverse we get 1 1 2 2 this one though interchange we get 2 1 and interchange the two coordinates we get 1 2 now I want to make this neat observation here R1 inverse, we see this is R1, right? And here, R2 inverse is not equal to R2. Um, we're about to prove, basically, that this holds, that for a relation R, R equals R inverse, if and only if R is symmetric. And we see this, this was the symmetric relation, this one was not symmetric. Now. Just as a comment, and then we will get to this proof, which will end the lesson. What happens with the diagrams? Well, this one, the diagram stays the same, so maybe I won't re redraw it. But here, if we have one, two, three, the diagram for our two inverse is here, it's here, it's here, but then three, the arrow goes this way. And if you remember for R2, it was the exact same diagram, except this arrow was flipped the other way. Generally, right, just thinking about you interchange the coordinates, if you have the diagram for R and you want the diagram for R inverse, you just reverse the direction of all the arrows. And this is the relationship diagram wise. Now, for R a relation on A, let's prove R equals R inverse if and only if R is symmetric. This is an if and only if statement. We know an if and only if statement has two directions. Well, one direction will be to show R equals R inverse, which also has two parts. So this will be quite a fun example. Let's say this is my P and this is my Q, and I want to prove P if and only if Q. Well, let's do this direction first. We assume R equals R inverse, and we want to show R is symmetric. Well, how do you prove something is symmetric? Well, we let say A, B, be elements of A with um, A, B is in my relation, okay? And then to be symmetric, I need to show B, A is in the relation, okay? Now, as R equals R inverse, while A, B is in the relation, these two sets are equal, so we have a, B is in R inverse. Okay, now, definition of R inverse. If A, B is in R inverse, that means that B comma A must be in R. And this is exactly what I wanted to show. I let A, B be elements of A with uh, A, B in my relation. And I was able to prove that in that case, B, A must also be in the relation. So thus, R is symmetric, and this is one direction, okay? Now we have this direction to prove. 
In this direction, we assume R is symmetric. And we want to show R equals R inverse. This direction, though, showing R equals R inverse, this is subset in each direction. So first, we will show this subset. Let's let A be in R. We need to show A B is in R inverse. Well, AB is in R. R is symmetric. That's our assumption. This means that BA is in R. And then using the definition of our inverse, if BA is an R, this means precisely we must have AB is in R inverse. And this is the end of this one direction. Now I need to prove this subset. And then this is going to be the end of this proof. So let's let AB in R inverse. And we need to show AB is in R. Well, we will use the definition of our inverse first using the definition of our inverse. AB is in our inverse. We see that BA is in R. And now we use that R is symmetric. This gives AB is in R. And this is the end of the subset in the other direction. Okay, so we have the entire proof, right? I proved this direction, and then I proved this direction, which was really two subset are equal to arguments. But we can just say thus R equals R inverse if and only if R is symmetric. And this is the end of this proof.